that was a request by Mark. He asked for some Charlie Parker and I had some Dizzy Gillespie. Dizzy is another Detroit jazz musician. I'm uh, trying to learn more about Detroit and jazz because I'm here in, in Detroit. Um, today we're in week four of the XAPI cohort. Today is the first time we'll be hearing updates from teams if teams are on the line. Um, we also have uh, rest to see software here with us, Chris Tampions, to talk about all types of things uh, with our learning ecosystem and learning record store. So we're excited to learn about what's a learning record system or re record store and um, how it fits into our learning ecosystem. Uh, as of today, we have 554 folks wow. registered for cohort. Yeah, <laughs> we got lots of people. Um, and then after our presentation, we'll hop right into where your team should be now, what you're working on, um, and our first team check-ins. Uh, behind the mic, we have uh, me, myself, and Jamie. Uh, and I, I thought that, that Leanne would be happy in today, but she might not be. Um, so Jamie is under XAPI cohort admin, and she's there for any tech issues that might come up during our presentation today. Just as a reminder, we kind of go through three sections of cohort. So in the beginning, we're getting very high level, what is XAPI, what is the cohort, um, and trying to get to know how to navigate this space, right? Um, so for the last three weeks, we've been learning a lot. There's been some, some um, you know, frustration of learning GitHub. There's, there's things of just learning the systems and processes and getting your team together. Um, and now we're moving into what is a a, a trying out period. So you, sh you should, and if you don't, it's okay. You're never too late for cohort and things can, can start at any point throughout the semester. Um, but you uh, will be hopping more into actually doing things with your project teams, iterating, um, assigning tasks and doing things. Um, and then in our discussions also get more um, intentional as we go through. So instead of it being high level, what, what can I do with XAPI? What is XAPI? Now we're getting into some nitty gritty things. We're talking about a learning record store. We're talking about a learning ecosystem. We're going to get into the differences between statements, states, and profiles. Um, we'll move into how you leverage learning analytics um, and from a from a as a resource for your team um, and get into like how the standards work um, are, are working at work. Uh, and then we'll wrap out with some creating dashboards and visualizations and then hop into case studies and real life examples of how folks are using um, using XAPI in the workplace. So, and then as we end up cohort, we have two days that are dedicated specifically to project team demos. And I, I will be this every week because every semester I have some folks who are doing hard work um, and trying things but are, are feel that they're not ready to present out. You don't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be final and it and, and it can absolutely be messy when you do these project team demos. That is a space for you to get feedback and really develop your some of your thoughts from the broader cohort. Um, so I want to welcome folks to sign up for the project team demos at the end of the semester and also know that it's not something that needs to be perfect when we do get there. Um, Now I'm gonna pass the mic over to Chris, who's always so excited and so energetic when you're here with cohort. I'm so glad you come with the energy, Chris. Um, thanks. And uh, thanks for being here. And we're excited to learn from you. Yeah, well, it's my pleasure. Hi everybody. My name's Chris. Uh, I'm here with Rust to see. Been here for ten years, and Rust to see software is not a name that everybody on this call has probably heard of up to this point. That's okay. But all we really do all day is help two e-learning products play nicely with one another. So today we're going to be talking about learning record stores, how they fit into an ecosystem. Rust to see kind of has a bunch of expertises when it comes to SCORM, AICC, XAPI, CMI5, these weird e-learning standards. But really, we're just driving that mission of help tools, learning data move where they need to move. And from that mission, it's pretty simple. But an LRS is an important step in an XAPI ecosystem. Um, and we're going to talk about them today to kind of understand the role that they play, where they are used, how we're going to explore when to use one over another, because it turns out there's a few different types of LRS, and it's 
weird to think about them in a vacuum. So we're going to look a little bit at how they're actually implemented out in the wild so that you know what you're bumping into, how to test to make sure that the LRS is what it is and does what it does. And then some practical ways here in the cohort for you guys to get started. I saw the schedule you have coming up. It's a pretty aggressive pace. I, I know the scorecard has a lot of success underneath it. So please stick with that methodology. But at the end of today's discussion, I hope to leave you with some real world tools that you can freely start to begin to play with XAPI as you get into statement design and how they send. We're going to make sure that you know how they're stored, which is really a pretty good segue into today's discussion. So step one is when do you need one? How do I identify when to use an LRS? I love XAPI. I think it's a fascinating use of a noun, a verb, and an object that lets us send things from one application to another. But ultimately, in order to send things from one place to another, it has to have somewhere to live. And with XAPI, we can track nearly anything. I'm going to give you that sales guy moment. Oh, we can track whatever. Cool. But should you? And when we've seen a lot of these real world XAPI projects come together, the most successful ones that I've been a part of, and certainly some of our colleagues have, have been the ones that decided to back into the project, to start knowing where they want to end up. It's much easier to argue about the ingredients and order of operations necessary to cook up a pie chart if we know the type of pie chart we need to cook up. And so having that end in mind is a great place to begin because tracking just everything that you can track and then trying to see what results you get out of it can be messy. It's far more work, but you get a targeted way to start a pilot project with XAPI if you begin knowing where you want to end up. So also have a need for XAPI. XAPI is different things to different people. In its pure form, it's just the noun verb object statement that one e-learning system can connect into another. But XAPI can also be a, a launchable package through the tin can launchable packages or CMI5. And knowing which side of that coin you happen to be on, are you trying to make arbitrary tracking statements from one system so that they can live inside of a database and we can analyze what's going on? or are you trying to just launch a beginning, a middle, and an end in an assessment from the other place? In which case, XAPI might be good, but SCORM is also not broken from that perspective. And while I, I love SCORM and I think it's great, it's also pretty old. But when we're talking about interoperability, something's age can really be its strength. And I want to be sure that you're using XAPI for the right reasons in the right ways because there are some way easier uh, paths to take if you have a different end in mind together. So that's kind of where I segued into launched content from an authoring tool out of Adobe's Captivate or Articulate storyline. And then the difference between a, a recessian simulator sending statements that says Chris revived a patient. Um, we also then have the LRS used to set up in an ecosystem, and that's where things get a little wiggly. So let's advance this in the right place. What is an LRS? And a database responsible for receiving XAPI statements. That's the simplest way to put it. If you're going to be using XAPI, they got to live in an LRS. It's designed to house data in a retrievable way so the reports can be built on it. And more importantly, XAPI LRSs are designed to statement forward to one another. By nature of being in an XAPI ecosystem, you are now storing your data in LRSs that can connect, that can share a subset of data, a subset of clients, that can go back and forth. And it frees us from the walled garden that we've sometimes seen inside learning management systems and training management systems throughout the industry, is that in the end state, if all data is formatted into a noun verb object XAPI statement, and all data is stored in an LRS that is consistent and we know what to do with, then we can send data from one to the other. LRS's power learning analytics platforms because it allows all of the different systems in the ecosystem to communicate to a common store in a common way. 
And that gives us the ability to learn and track things and really start to get outcomes when a training management system, a learning management system, a, a time clock, all types of different systems track what employees, uh, volunteers, and doctors are doing, XAPI is going to be that common ground and the LRS is the common place. It also allows us to be the heart of an XAPI ecosystem. The LRS should only have the data that you need, but the LRS can also share out the data that others might need. And this is why I think it's a good foundational step here as you go through this process to really get into them. So I, I, I'm a car guy. I like to work on cars. Um, it's a horrible hobby, but it's unfair to say a screwdriver, a socket, and a wrench are all the same tool. They all turn a threaded bolt, so use the new one. One of these tools is going to be way easier to use than another, depending on the situation you find yourself in. And I don't know that I'm going to be able to walk through every possible situation today but I do want to create that analogy in your mind of, okay, there are a few different ways that we could approach this. All of them are technically correct. All three of these tools turn a threaded bolt. Which one is easiest to use? What makes sense in the situation that we find ourselves in today? So you could use an LRS because you wrote it yourself. Go to adlnet.gov, download the official XAPI specification documentation, write yourself a learning record story using databases of your choice. I think that's a fantastic option. And at xapi.com, we've even created documentation to help you get started. There is an XAPI conformance testing suite we'll talk about later, and you can verify that you've done the right thing. That's good. But it also might protract or enlarge the, uh, the runway for getting an XAPI project off the ground if your first foundational steps are just creating a place for them to be stored. You could also look then to say, okay, well, let me deploy something real quick and easy. Open source platforms like Learning Locker, um, they only require you to have the skills necessary to use a server and to understand the DevOps process of spinning up a database and making sure that it's got the right ports and can connect and do things. So a different class of skills are necessary to use an off the shelf open source LRS. And that might be the right fit for you. Saves you a bunch of scratch work developer effort, allows you to deploy and do things immediately. You've also got selfishly tools like Rust to C Engine, OEM tools behind the scenes in almost every LMS in the world. Um, that's Rust to C's magic. We are the power behind a bunch of LMSs out on the market and they all look at us and say, hey, we'd rather just have this black box that can do this and our Rust to C Engine can be deployed in a bunch of different ways with our support and help, and we can get you up to speed really quickly. We can also host those for you, either privately or through the SCORM cloud that we're gonna look at. My point is not to sell you Rust to C products, but instead to say there are some off the shelf options that are ready to go in minute one. They're already hosted, they're already tested, they're already approved, and your focus for an XAPI project can begin immediately with statement design, reports, end in mind, let's start to write things without going through the infrastructure process of having your own LRS. You can just go borrow one, and that's great. SCORM Cloud's free to get started and try. We help you grow. That's what we're here for. So again, the, the last step then would be a full analytics suite watershed, yet analytics, learning pool. There are several to choose from. Those teams have reports and ends and minds and consultative appro approaches to using them. And you could be generating reports in a business day from some XAPI statements going in because they are the right tool if you are more of a software power user than a developer themselves somewhere in this continuum is the right tool for your project and the right tool for your need. It's important with that end in mind to understand what you want to get out of this and where you are in your tool set. Because I think the value of XAPI is being able to see the outcomes and measure the ways that learning and training impacts real world results and getting the right LRS to get started can greatly influence the timeline and the outcomes that you'll have in your project. So let's look at a standalone LRS. We're gonna take a, like a theoretical approach and then we're gonna have a practical approach for each one of these three options. 
The standalone LRS is used to store and retrieve data about learning experiences. So if you're going to replace your, LRS, your LMS with just an LRS, this is a, a whole thing and it, it will be the learning analytics tool. It's like Watershed LRS, a, a sister company of ours. I know those guys well, but there are others out there that might be a good fit for you. And it's gonna be the source of truth. It's where people are gonna go to see their dashboards, their reports, their learning analytics, their badges. And you can see the little arrows to the green boxes on the side to kind of explain my diagram here that comes out of my crazy brain. But those systems all have to send data to that LRS. LRS is Switzerland in this example. It's just living in the middle, use whatever learning tools you want. And as long as they're sending X API statements in there, you'll come into the LRS to check on your source of truth. So in practice, this might not be possible. This ecosystem requires every one of the green boxes to fully support X API, to send the right statements in the right format so that they plug into these tools. Um, but it's important to do things like avoid hard-coded credentials. You'll want a sophisticated partner to help you send these X API statements. But in the outcome, this is a great way to centralize data across the entire organization without having to have one provider that is everything to the learning ecosystem. You can have a quilt work. And the LRS in this example is the central source of truth so that end users, end teams, end organizations, there's a lot of ways, especially like large corporate conglomerate type of things where trying to get everybody on a single, single vendor is impossible. The LRS frees us up to be a little more agnostic as to what's going on in that ecosystem. Another common way that I see LRSs deployed in modern e-learning organizations is that the LMS will provide an LRS. This is great. I see a lot of them out there. Rustacy supports a lot of uh, LMSs that do this type of approach. And the LMS is trying to continue to be the one-stop shop for all of the e-learning activities that are happening. It's great. This is a comfortable space that many have used in the industry for a long time. But it can be a little bit limiting if the LMS doesn't have a report builder as an easy example. A lot of the power of XAPI is that by putting a bunch of data from a bunch of systems in one place, you can go and explore the data and be able to build on that. And if you have a lot of really sophisticated ends in mind for XAPI, you might be limited by what the LMS is able to create with respect to reports and the type of studies that they're able to do with XAPI. And again, it requires that some pieces of the ecosystem already support XAPI. So if the LMS does it itself, it's really advantageous. We can have an LMS that has an LRS and the LMS activities go and rest inside of the LRS. Um, Rustacy's engine includes an LRS. It also includes a SCORM and an AICC course player. And we kind of Ada magically convert the SCORM and AICC tracking into XAPI and store it in the central LRS that our tool includes. So that's what the LMS does here, as you can see by my little green boxes. Then as we step out of the LMS ecosystem, the walled garden of that learning application, simulations, apps, systems, games, time clocks, whatever, can start to feed data into the LMS and will always go to the LMS to look at reports. So, in the ecosystem practical example, we end up in a situation where the LMS is the source of truth. It supports launch. It supports authentication. It becomes the one place a learner knows to go in order to train. It can also easily support reporting on XAPI activities alongside the other learning activities in that LMS. That's really easy. It's all in one spot. It's all one learner ID. We can start to see some cool things. But you might end up where the data isn't as portable out as we would expect. The LMS has to implement statement forwarding in a unique way. They've got to be able to work with other providers. And a lot of LMSs don't have the data extraction that you might expect, even if there's LRSs behind the scenes in other ways. So keep that in mind and test, test, test. If you're going to take this approach and look at an LRS inside of an LMS, it's probably a really good idea but you should test and understand the capabilities, know what your end in mind is, and apply that strategy to the LMS to work with that vendor to say, 
can I build this report? This is what I want to see. And I know you have an LRS. Do I have access to the LRS in the ways that I assume I do? Because assumptions can be dangerous and test, 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 get to your LMS vendor and understand what you've got, what tools do you have in your toolbox so that you can understand how to get where you want to be. So there's also a weird case here where I combine those two examples. And I see this in the real world all the time where a company might have an LMS that has its own LRS and then they have watershed sitting on the side and they have their own little data warehouse that handles an inventory system or something. You can dream pretty big. LRSs are generally pretty light. There's not a lot to click on. They kind of just accept statements as an activity provider. They statement forward out to other LRSs that are considered to be activity providers. And you can kind of stitch together a quilt work of what might work for you. This gives you the capability to connect activity providers and other LRSs that don't have anything to do with the LMS. It makes sharing between vendors a lot easier and it brings different applications for different views into the data. So you get to pick the tool where you want to see the outcomes. And practically, it allows us to have more interoperability, to target a need, or in my earlier words, to, to chase that end in mind. And it's easier to adapt and integrate with other tools that might not necessarily be in the learning and development space um, to help connect to patient interaction portals and time cards and scheduling and all types of other systems, XAPI can be common ground so that those vendors can go implement something easy that extracts data, that works in these ecosystems, and it avoids silos. That's one of the biggest things I'm excited about when we talk about LRSs and ecosystems is that I never know what a large organization or even a small organization wants to study. And having data trapped away in certain places can be frustrating for an analyst, but this avoids data being siloed away in, in one source of truth. LRSs can start to help be collaborative in the way that outcomes are studied and measured. So if you do take the time to get an off-the-shelf LRS, or if you're really industrious and you write your own, this is where you can go to make sure the thing you have is true. Um, facts are friendly at Rusticy Software. We say it all the time. This is how to get to facts. If you want to test the LRS, if you're curious about how things work, or you need the peace of mind to know that, hey, we're putting a big foundation here. I got to make sure these tools are what they are. ADL is a neutral place to help you make sure that the LRS is conformant and is going to satisfy your needs. Um, you can also see, and there's a link here, and I know that this, these slides will be shared out later, but ADL also does a fantastic job of keeping up of a list of um, LRSs that have passed that. So it, if you don't want to test your own and you need some confidence that this, these foundational products are going to have a little bit of a runway to them and that are what they say they are, check out ADL's list. I think it's a fantastic place to start your search. Selfishly, we have the SCORM Cloud LRS. I'm not here to sell you on it, but I am here to say it is a free tool. Facts are friendly to us. I want to make sure that I can put an LRS in your hands so that the cohort can go build interesting studies. You can work on your projects, and you might just need an LRS without having to worry about hosting it yourself. Great. It's easy to get started with. Everyone on this call, we have 68 participants in this moment. Fantastic. Everybody should go to cloud.scorm.com and sign up for a free LRS. It's here to use. We're, we're happy to answer questions along the way. But really, this gives us a simple way to manage your endpoints, manage activity providers, see the data, understand the code, and it's all at hand so that it might not be the LRS that you need in production. It might not be the thing that you end up at the end. But here at the start of your journey, it's a fantastic place to help you get up to speed quickly. And if you do have some legacy content, the SCORM Cloud can automatically convert the SCORM and AICC tracking you see into XAPI statements and put them in there so that you can kind of compare maybe where your organization has been with traditional learning and what it will look like in an XAPI world this afternoon. And I think that's pretty cool and a great place to start. It also fully supports statement forwarding. So I'm not trying to lock you in. If you do end up with another LRS because you built it yourself or you bought one or you're working with Watershed or somebody else, that's great. Use statement forwarding. You can pack up your toys and go play nicely somewhere else. 
That's the intent of the Scorm Clouds LRS as it is today. So what does that look like? It's not too fancy. There'll be a little button on the left-hand side that'll take you into the LRS. And this is where you're gonna be able to manage your endpoints and see everything. You're gonna be able to manage your activity providers, creating secret keys and IDs that help you connect to those things to use the different authentication types, whether it be basic or OAuth. We want you to be able to hit the ground running without having to go through the minutia of your own LRS. And it's all right here at a click. We also have some basic reporting inside SCORM Cloud. And the data I'm sharing on my screen is representative of a SCORM course. This allows us to see what I call the big four, time, completion, pass, fail, score. It's kind of a bare minimum of what people expect out of a traditional e-learning experience that has a beginning, a middle, an end, and probably an assessment. And in this example, I think even on the right-hand side, we can start to see kind of the interactions and it's clearly a SCORM 2004 package. But our automagical translator is going to turn those SCORM outcomes into a clearly expressed XAPI statement. Chris completed the golf example with a score of 27. Clearly, I'm not any good at golf. But you can click on these lines at any time, expand them, see the XAPI code that we used. And I think XAPI is going to have a bright and long future. I've been doing this quite a while now. But I think that if we ask the industry tomorrow to turn off SCORM and some of the things that have brought us up to this point, we'll never be successful. Modern ecosystems are gonna require a different set of tools. They're gonna require being nimble. And our approach here is just to help you get where you wanna be without worrying too much about the standards. Again, just help systems play nicely with one another. Let's use whichever tool is easiest. So this XAPI LRS, is a free way to kind of understand the differences between traditional and modern XAPI design and help you start to blend those things together here on day one. And that's why I get excited about presenting it to you guys and kind of offering this as a path. So once you get data inside that LRS, how do we get it out? The statement pipe is supporting XAPI statement forwarding. You'll be able to select the range of statements that you need. You'll be able to enter other LRS credentials and be able to take those out and present those to other spaces so that you can move your data as you need to, other data can come in. This is the magic of these ecosystems inside an, an LRS XAPI based community is that it starts to help data end up where it needs to be, when it needs to be there for the right reasons and the right study. I'll also say, probably don't move all data at all times. Um, there's a right and a wrong reason to have expressive data in one LRS, but if you're just trying to get to the big four, time completion, pass, fail, score, all you have to do is jump in and, and grab those subsets of statements. So I, I think you should check out this slide, if nothing else, um, at the end today. These are the ways to get started for free. The cohort's all about building, all about real world progress, all about you guys getting your hands dirty. And these are a great set of tools to help you guys get started with the foundational part of XAPI, how to get your statements together, how to store them, LRSs that are available to you, some from Rust to C, some not. I'm, I'm not too passionate about which one you end up in. I just wanna be sure that you guys have the tools you need to be successful here and to focus on those outcomes because the end in mind with XAPI, at least in my opinion, is profoundly important. The LRS you choose to do that with isn't nearly as fascinating. Um, as a car guy, no one cares about my sockets, my screwdrivers, or my wrenches. They look at the end product, and I want you guys to stay focused on that rather than the underlying and underpinning tools that accompany them. So th this list will be easy to find, uh, concluding our thing. <laughs> Tara left a picture of me looking like a crazy person. Um, I'm here to answer questions, guys. If nothing else, Rust to See has an ask us anything really attitude. It's what we do day in and day out. And so if you have questions now, fantastic. Tara's queuing them up for me so that I can keep my sanity. Um, we also have the ability for you to reach out at any time. Info at rustaseesoftware.com. Come straight to us. And there's a lot of resources at scorm.com and xapi.com designed for practitioners, for folks who are building things. No, no heavy sales approach there, just a lot of guides and technical resources to help you get started.
Um, I've got one question queued up here in front of me, so I'm just going to go ahead and answer it. If SCORM Cloud automatically generates XAPI statements from SCORM packages, can I turn that off? If I want to test a package that I've modified to send XAPI, uh, I believe so. Yeah, we have ways to do that, but um, arguably, you could still send XAPI statements from another way, and you, you, they'll just double stack there. But yeah, it is configurable in SCORM Cloud, maybe, but in our enterprise process, uh, tools, absolutely. Um, our content controller and our, our rust -to -C engine have more toggleable switches, but I'm not too worried about that. Yeah, it's one of the ways we might be able to help. Any other questions I might be able to answer? Cool. Well, I'll respect the awkward silence. Um, Jess, thank you for showing back up. <laughs> um, is there anything I might be able to do to add to our discussion today? Or will it be best for you guys to do, I think, your next steps of little breakout sessions, or at least group catch up? <laughs> we do have two questions that came in in the chat. Um, can you run through the process of how to put XAPI in SCORMs? OK. And so. SCORM and XAPI are two different standards completely. And a SCORM session is typically a zip file that's published out of an authoring tool or built by hand. All of the HTML lives inside it. And the two-way communication between that course and the LMS is done through this thing called the IMS manifest.xml that's at the root of the file. SCORM has typically a runtime, a beginning, a middle, and an end. And XAPI can too. You could publish a package, a launchable thing. It's a 10 can package, comes out of most authoring tools, and we provide a player for that. You could also use CMI5. I, I'll put it this way. I don't think XAPI ever replaces SCORM, but I do think CMI5 might. And so CMI5 is, is using XAPI but it is a unit that can be moved between systems and assigned and launched and tracked in similar ways. So I'm kind of dancing around. Can I run through the process of how to put XAPI into SCORMs? Not easily and quickly in the amount of space and breathing room we have here, but I would also push, you probably shouldn't because SCORM is chasing a different problem and SCORM is a different tool. It's kind of like, can I add a screwdriver to the middle of my socket? Well, yeah. And I realized that that nut might have both a hex head and a cross head on it at the same time, but, but should you? <laughs> so I'm mostly not willing to do it without having a little more context to it. And if you're just trying to get SCORM tracking big four type of reporting, the LMS can do that. If you're trying to add more to SCORM in order to play it, maybe, but we're going to get a little wiggly around where is the LRS really? How are credentials coded in there? Sh should they be? And it's kind of not a good picture at the end of the day. Whereas, wow, if, if you're doing this and, and there's a 10 can player or a CMI5 adapter or something else, you can get what you want without me wringing my hands at a bad idea. Uh, next question. Can you connect QuickSight with your LRS solutions from Amazon? I don't know. Um, to be completely candid, this is the first time I've seen that tool written out that way. So I would scratch my head and do some homework, maybe, is, is an answer. I, I'm just not really familiar with QuickSight at all. Um, Amazon has some tools, but none of them are XAPI off the shelf. We do offer at xapi.com slash libraries a number of free and open source client libraries that are ready for .NET, Java, Objective-C, JavaScript. There's a bunch of languages there. And if those tools have the capability to let you add a little bit of flavor to what they've got going on, yeah, XAPI becomes pretty easy. Point those statements at an LRS of your choice, configure them the way they need to be and data can come flowing. But I, I'm not familiar with QuickSight enough to know off the top of my head standing here if it has XAPI already. Likely it doesn't, if I'm just guessing. Um, but if it does, we can test it against SCORM Cloud's LRS for free. You can understand the type of statements that it generates right out of the box. And if it doesn't support it today, we'd want to open the hood and see, well, where can we begin to hook in to just send what we need out to that LRS as a neutral ground? 
But luckily, regardless of outcome, it comes back to today's topic of you need that LRS in order to know if these tools are going to be capable of sending it. And if that's successful, then we start to talk about the anatomy of an XAPI statement, which I think comes up probably next in the cohort as you guys begin to play with this. Awesome. I think we, we've gotten to all of the questions. Um, there's one question if they can connect with you offline. I just want to make sure that that's the email to connect with you at. That's it. Info <laughs> at uh, chris.tompkins. It's not too fancy here. Um, yeah, we'll see that. You might end up with Andy Whitaker, who knows candidly more about XAPI than I probably do these days, but you're in good hands. We're happy to dive into whatever problems. We're, we're not consultants, so I'm not here to get interesting XAPI hours. We, we've got a bunch of tools that might be the right fit for you, but certainly ask all the questions at any time at your own pace. That's what I'm here for every day. Awesome. Thank you so oh. much, Chris. We've got we've got two new questions. And, and if it's all right, Jess, I'll just yep. answer them real quick since I think we've got a little bit of time. I don't understand what CMI5 is and what it brings to the table. I think it comes later in the cohort. So I'll just give you enough to tease you. CMI5 is more of a packaging standard. XAPI as a whole is a communication standard. It's a way to help plumbing. It's data, learner data, nouns, verb, objects, moving between things. CMI5 is what you're saying. So inside the LRS that Scorm Cloud provides, I call this the fired, fired, fired example. I can have people write custom statements into that LRS that says, Chris fired a weapon. Okay, cool. People do that. And the ADL is a Department of Defense sponsored organization. That is a normal use case for XAPI. But I get a lot of business systems that will send statements to that same LRS in Scorm Cloud that says Chris fired an employee because they just hooked up their human resource system to the LRS. Okay. Well, I also have K through 12 educational institutions all over the world that are studying the arts program. So they're gonna send us a statement that says, Chris fired a kiln as a part of a pottery class. Great, you fired some things. I can't give you a canned report for custom statements because I don't understand what fired, fired, fired means without a human getting involved. So CMI5 helps solve that problem. It takes some of the most commonly used things we need to know, Chris passed, Chris failed, Chris scored, as three easy examples, and says, OK, this is how it works. Here is a launchable thing that an LMS can take. It knows how to process it. It's not all custom and crazy. It launches the thing, and it puts a normalized set of data back in another system so that you can have a bunch of canned reports and let it fly. XAPI is the communication standard and the way that data is transferred between systems. CMI5 is how to launch it and what you're saying in a way that's repeatable so that tools can just fit one another right off the shelf. Um, selfishly, Rusticy Software is involved in a pretty big project right now with ADL. And in the fall, we will be releasing a test suite so that CMI5 providers can guarantee that their content follows the standard. It'll be free and open. We will be building a test suite for people who build CMI5 players of their own to verify that their player runs the way it should and tracks the way it should. We will be also releasing an open source CMI5 player as a part of that project so that teams that need a player in their system can use potentially that open source tool. And we'll be advancing the CMI5 standard a little bit to make sure that we avoid that fired, fired, fired problem in elegant ways. So I'm excited about CMI5. And I know that that comes later in the cohort, but XAPI is how things communicate. CMI5 is what you're doing and saying. Um, you want a t-shirt? I'll see what I can do. Tara, can you take notes? And maybe we'll have t-shirts next time they're made. I'm, I'm not sure where they are in the office anymore. We haven't been there in a minute. We'll see what we can do. Oh, awesome. the one and in there's the presentation. This one. Oh, no. That t-shirt is... Uh, a limited edition. There, there are no more of those. So that, that is mine. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's just one more question. Um, does CMI5 replace the SCORM manifest? It can. Um, so yes, I, the SCORM communications model, if we really look under the hood, if you want to, I'm going to do a really 
draw with Crayon's job here, and I know there are more technical people than me on these calls. Um, everything that SCORM does, whether it's SCORM 1, 2, or second, third, or fourth edition of the SCORM 2004, if we really start to look at the debug log of how that course is communicating, it's always using CMI dot completion status, progress, bookmark, whatever. The CMI data model has been with us for 25 years. I don't know if it's CMI 4 or 3 or whatever in each one of the SCORM standards just off the top of my head, but CMI 5 is that same magic that SCORM has been relying on that helps different products play nicely with one another without having to have those human contextual clues as to what's going on. And that's the moment where I say, yes, I can answer that question. Will it replace the manifest? Yes-ish. If the way I'm assuming you're asking that question is is kind of structured, then yeah, that and that's why I'm excited about it. From a guy who spends his time just trying to help tools get along, CMI5 is a really cool tool in the toolbox that I'm excited we're advancing. And it, over time, it will become the way that, that hopefully to, authoring teams and learning teams connect so that SCORM begins to take a step back. Awesome. Thank you so Great. much for that, Chris. I think we're right at the All end right. of your presentation. If you have further questions, feel free to reach out at his email address. Um, and thank you so much for your time and, and for, for, for learning with us. Yeah, I think there'll be another session later. So we'll yeah. stay tuned. Good luck with the cohort, <laughs> and I'll catch up with you guys a little bit down the road. <laughs> awesome. All right. Bye, everybody. All right. So we're going to hop into our team updates. This is the first week where we are submitting updates. And I saw four folks submit that they're present to present on their team today. So we have Miranda with Team Goodish, Brian with Team Live Cold, and Kieran, please, Kieran, correct correct me on how I pronounce your name, um, with visualizing student data. I will, I'm going to just walk through this um, this time, uh, what we do for our team updates is I share my desktop um, so that you can see our website, right? Um, and you can see our website under GitHub Teams. I want to say that this is the first semester since we've been using GitHub that we've had this many teams this early in the semester. So I think that we're at least knowing how to get our teams into GitHub. That's very exciting. Um, if you need further support on how to get your team into GitHub, how to submit your updates, please don't hesitate to send us a message in Slack. That's what we're here for. You can message me, you can message Matt, um, or you can message our help desk and all of that information will be on my last slide today. So I'm gonna, go with team goodish miranda if you want to go ahead and give your update thank you jess um team goodish had their first meeting last friday um an amazing group of people with uh, a diverse um, uh, you know number of skills and talents um so really exciting first meeting uh we introduced ourselves shared our superpowers and we shared personal goals for the semester of cohort we also discussed the objective of our project and agreed to create a proof of concept. We're honing in on an instance, um, which is to use XAPI to help hiring professionals interrupt bias prior to sourcing candidates for employment. Um, we also began a discussion on development and brainstorming, which includes brainstorming where the tool might live, what tools we could potentially use for development and uh, what we could use for prototyping. Um, areas where we may need support are, you know, we're looking for a templated chatbot tool that'll help us design, you know, and not only design uh, quicker, but uh, or to develop quicker, but to also design for inclusivity and accessibility. We want to we want to keep those things in mind. Um, so, if you have any great recommendations, we're here for it. And what we hope to accomplish next week is to focus on one bias um, related to hiring. We're going to research typical challenges, you know, related to that bias to help form branching and questions and to have insights and feedback. Uh, we're going to hone in on what data the tool will send to the LRS and choose an LRS. And um, we're going to um, 
agree on our timeline for development as well. Awesome, thank you for the update, Miranda. So if you all wanna hop into Team Goodish, they are starting to do the work um, and have some good content there. Brian, did you wanna give your update for Team Live Code? Yes, here I am. Sorry, I was expecting to be further down the list. So Team Live Code has actually had multiple meetings. We've been putting our updates into GitHub as well as recording the meetings and posting them to YouTube. Uh, most recently, our team used a tool called Win to Meet to try and identify common times for us to have a regular meeting time. Uh, we discussed goals for Team XAPI and Live Code, um, including details from earlier discussions, and asked each of the members present if they needed elaboration on revision. And then we discussed um, part one projects that are underway. And by this, I mean projects with the goal of completing in the first half of the uh, XAPI cohort so that we have a baseline live code project that is actually acting as a learning record provider and sending statements to an LRS. And then the second half projects will be to actually add content in and build uh, learning applications sample learning applications using that baseline that can be deployed either as an application or as, as a live code project that others can use. Um, areas we are needing uh, support, we don't have any currently. And then what we hope to accomplish next week, we have tentative weekly meetings set for Wednesdays at 4 p.m. Eastern. We're planning on coordinating updates for these part one projects. Um, David is leading one, Martin is leading one, and myself, Brian Duck is leading one. So we're gonna coordinate between us and come up with a way to update the team during that regular meeting time. And then we're planning um, an introduction to live code session around week five or six. And this would be open to all cohort members to get an understanding of what live code is and how they might use it. It's not necessarily XAPI specific, but it is a development environment for um, deploying to desktop and to tablet or, or phone iOS and Android. Um, so uh, people may be interested in seeing that within the cohort. Awesome. For us. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Um, and then I'm going to have Kieran uh, with Team Visualizing Learner Behavior. Uh, hi, thanks. Um, I'm Kieran Matheson from Oakland University in Michigan. And the project is Visualizing Learner Behavior. And what that means depends a lot on the organization and its goals, as Chris said earlier. Now, in my case, I'm a professor. I teach programming, and I make a custom textbook-like thing for every course. Uh, it has lessons, exercises, and also lots of learning science goodness uh, baked into the student experience. What I don't know is how students are using the things I make. I'd like to sit over their shoulder and watch them, but that's a bit creepy. Um, so instead, XAPI seems like a perfect solution for this. Where I'd like to start in understanding students is to start with understanding how they read lessons. So do they start at the top and go down? Do they jump to the end of the lessons? Finding the company exercises and go back up the page? I've got no idea, and the more I know about it, the more I can improve, the, improve their experience. So that's my current goal, is understanding student behavior and reading lessons. Others on the team will want different things, depending upon what their uh, particular goals are. Now, you start, start this off by getting some student data to view into an LRS. So done three things so far. First, we've got an LRS running, the, the track system. Uh, second, we've written some simple test programs that store and retrieve XAPI statements. And it seems to be working well. Um, we're using the Rusty CPHP library for that. And it's working well so far, though, if Chris Thompson, uh, Tompkins is still there, hint, hint, it could really use some more documentation, dude. Um, and the third thing we've done is that we've got a standards document with a few templates for the XAPI statements that track lesson reading behavior. So essentially, we're making our own XAPI profile. Uh, it's got 
some some things in commonality with the um, um, JISC profile and and, and and other things, but it's it's focused specifically on the things we're interested in analyzing. Uh, there are templates for things like viewing a lesson, scrolling through a lesson, leaving a lesson. That's what what there is so far. The next step is to write some more test programs using the templates from the standards document we have. So thanks for listening. Thank you so much, Kieran. Um, the next person that I have is uh, Rachel. And I don't think, Rachel, your team has a, 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 a GitHub page yet, but I think you have an announcement from Team ARAP. And while we're waiting for Rachel, Matt Hardy. Rachel is muted. Oh, wait, can you hear me now? Now we can hear you. Go ahead, Rachel. <laughs> the controls were disabled up front. Um, well, I just, um, I thought I had created a GitHub team, so I'm gonna spend some time after the cohort going in and trying to figure out what I did wrong, because I'm new. <laughs> Um, but our team, it's the Anti-Racism Action Plan um, from OSU's Wexner uh, Medical Center. We're creating an online museum gallery kind of experience, and I want to use the data to um, see how people are exploring it and maybe even create engagements through that. Um, we're building it in Storyline, and I want to host it on the web and not through an LMS. So tomorrow we have a meeting. 12:30 Eastern time, and I put a calendar in the um, in the channel so that if anyone wants to join, they can. We'd love to have people. I really I don't know XAPI, um, a very basic understanding of it. So I could use some XAPI SMEs that could help me navigate this kind of standalone. Um, but then also, if people are interested in contributing content, you know, I won't turn that away either. We'd love help with that. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. No problem. Thank you, Rachel. Um, I have it on my calendar. I'm hoping to hop in. Um, we have Matt with Team Storyline Engagement. Are you still on the line? To give an update? All right. If you're not here, Matt, um, I'm going to hop over to John. Did you want to give an update on behalf of Team um, SCORM and XAPI? Oh, I see you, Matt. You're off mute. Go ahead, Matt. Oh. having a hard time hearing. I'm not hearing anything, but if John wanted to give an update on team SCORM and XAPI, um, and it seems like he's having trouble with his mic as well. Okay, yeah, this was great, Megan. We had lots of updates this, this week, um, which is great for this time in cohort. I just wanted to, before I transition back to my slideshow, I wanted to, show you one channel in Slack. So the channel demos and vendor offers, all of the free stuff we talked about last week, their offers are in this channel. I am gonna ask that we kind of keep this dedicated only to offers for vendors and, and not have conversations in here. If there are questions, um, go ahead and, and go to Maine to have some of those questions. But you can see we have Zappy App, Cultura, Veracity, Watershed, um, Zappily, Learning Locker, Domino, um, Grassblade. We just got a new Quant Hub um, resource. And then I put in the SCORM Cloud um, that Chris told us about today. So feel free to, if you're looking for where to get the free stuff, it is in this Slack channel um, and they're all listed there on how to access them. With that, I'm gonna go over to my presentation and wrap up today's 
conversation. Uh, just as a reminder, we are in week four of cohort. So this is the perfect time that we see all like project teams getting to work, digging into details and really thinking about what they're doing with their projects. Um, we have lots of teams that have formed. So feel free to feel free to to go ahead in to any of those channels join the teams and um, participate or or not participate um, and lurk is what we call that if you're not participating and not contributing um, and then learning more together finally some good things to know we meet here every week at two o'clock p.m we are now in the 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 time of cohort that um that teams are giving updates and presenting out on how their projects are advancing so we do ask that you have a representative every week to speak out on behalf of your team today we had so many updates early on that was really good to know to see how much work is happening in our teams uh, if you need support on how to join a project or you're not sure what to do please don't hesitate to reach out to me um, i'm in slack as jess jackson um, next week we have nitty gritty of xipi on statement state profiles oh my with aaron silvers um, and just as a reminder and a plug uh, the party is may 14th and you can learn more about it on our website um, as always if you have any questions comments or concerns feel free to send our help desk xapi cohort at torrencelearning.com a message or send me a message in slack uh, I hope that you have a great, a great rest of your week, uh, and we'll wrap up today with a little bit more Dizzy Gillespie. Um, I'm on the jazz kick. I agree um, that with that we can uh, with Mark that we can listen to this all day. It's very soothing. Uh, have a great week, y'all, and continue to get out there and make things.